I find that the greatest tool for writing is to walk. It really helps to think it's just, you know, solitude. I call myself a composer. I write pop music and I write theater music, I perform and I sing. I teach songwriting at McPhail for many years, but I think I'm probably most known for being in the suburbs, my rock band that I started when I was 19 years old. I went to high school at Blake School here in Minnesota and studied music at McPhail, you know, theory and jazz piano, and that really was one of those kind of music nerd kids that actually liked studying music and practicing piano. So when I went to CalArts, which is California Institute of the Arts out in Los Angeles, it was kind of had aspirations to be more of a contemporary classical composer. And I was really into jazz, and to get into school I had to write my own 12-tone serialist piece, and so I was somewhat serious about that. But at the same time, I was hanging out with my buddy Beach Cheney, and we were partying and having a good time and listening to a lot of rock and roll. So I came back to Minneapolis and wanted to start a rock band. They met up with Chris Osgood from the Suicide Commandos. And Chris said, you know, the only people who are doing this kind of music in town, this is 1977, are uh, me. And I said, well, why don't you be in my band? And he goes, I got my own band. But there's a couple other guys, uh, Bruce Allen and Michael Halliday, that are playing this kind of music. They're really into this kind of music. So Bruce and Michael and I got together and started the suburbs. I like cows. And they like me. We got our first deal with Twin Tone when we were 19 years old, and we put out a couple of really cool records uh, right away. And in 1980, we were signed to Polygram, uh, and we put out a record called Love is the Law. And then by that time, we were touring and doing videos, and we were on MTV and all that stuff, and in New York and LA and traveling. And we ended up moving to A&M Records. We were touring with R.E.M. and playing with the Talking Heads, and we were all friends, and you know, we were hanging out. But it was a beautiful, fun, super fun time. From 1977 to 1987 was the suburbs heyday. was my outlet for songwriting. And we started out writing alternative music. And then we kind of reached this peak. We couldn't get the radio play that we needed to sell enough records. And uh, we were dropped by our labels. And so I went through quite a confused <laughs> period as a songwriter. I just couldn't find my voice or my groove and lost my interest, really. And that's when I got into writing for theater. One day. It was all sunshine, and then the sunshine left in an 86 Chrysler LeBaron. Just drove down the street, took a left at the light, and then all the light was gone. So when the suburbs finally called it quits, I become friends with Dominique Sarand and Stephen Epp and people in of Jeune Lune, Theatre de la Jeune Lune. And they said, we're opening this new theater. Why don't you write some music for our new show? And I just dove into it. It was 1789, French Revolution. I wrote for strings. And I brought in uh, synthesizers and computers and samplers. It's quite an epic piece they did at the Guthrie Lab. The success of that, I went, oh, this is cool. I want to do this. I understand you now. You took a sacred vow to close your heart and lock out all the pain. He 
left you feeling numb He left you struck dumb Stuck down in the shadows where you reign The Ordway called and they were putting together locally produced team they wanted to do their own show and they chose me to compose, Joe Koala to direct and choreograph and Craig Wright to be the playwright. And we came up with a show called Heaven. There's a lot of traditional gypsy music and um, we had a successful kind of run at the Guthrie, won the Sage for best choreography and music and we want to show it to the public theater and we'll see what happens with that. To Marjorie, my darling wife, there's nothing cheaper than a human life. Neither yours nor another's nor her very own mother's. Thus I'll have just a small glass of wife. I mean wine. I'm working on a show with Jeff Hatcher for the Minnesota History Theater called Glen Sheen. It's about the Congdon murders. This is the story, a tale we know well, of greed and murder as foul as we've seen. Harrowing, gory, the spirits still dwell in the halls of haunted Glen Sheen. So I love the, the task of crafting character songs, and a lot of times I'll start with lyrics with that. It's getting late for the woman. Turn another page for the woman locked inside her cage. So that even those ballads are a little darker and a little same kind of mood. It's her murder plot, not mine. <laughs> I'm quite amused by my own work. <laughs> it's her murder plot, not mine. As opposed to Olympus, which is The musical theater thing is a labor of love because um, it takes years of workshops and preparation. So it really is just for the sheer enjoyment of it. Tell him the only way his heart will mend is when he learns to love again. And it seems kind of funny right now, but just still be friends. Let him down easy. John, Steve, and I are the new standards, and John Munson and I have been friends, and we were, we were working on a project, and it was just the stand-up bass and the piano in my living room where we were rehearsing, and my wife, Eleanor, came out of the bedroom and went, this is awesome, what are you guys doing? You should take this, you know, you should go on stage and do this. So we asked Steve to join us, and Steve Rome, of course, he is the new standards. I've got a feeling this year's for me and you. So happy Christmas. I love you, baby. There's an offshoot of the new standards. It's this big, sprawling uh, kind of variety show that we do it called the New Standards Holiday Show. The cool thing of the show is we get a lot of good guests. This year is going to be silly. Good. <laughs> In 2013, the suburbs got back together. We had Hugo on drums, myself, and Beach is still the core unit. Steve Price joined us, and now he's one of the family, love him. And we asked Steve Bransig to take Bruce's part. So we got that group together, the new kind of revamped suburbs, and uh, made this new record. One of the first things I wanted to do was go to play New York so we could get you know, the national press. And so we're off back, you know, out in the world. Favorite. 
when uh, my wife passed away, it was, I, you know, I was alone. And so when I started writing the song, which turned out to be one of the cooler songs in the record, I think, I realized it was about her. She just loved to dance around the kitchen. We'd cook and eat, you know, drink wine. And I always knew it was going to be a, a romantic evening if the music came on in the kitchen. We can dance if you take my hand. I think to make it work is diversify. You know, I'll teach and I'll do theater and make rock records, play shows, play piano. I do feel super blessed to have the opportunity to make art and make music. Tonight. 